Hey, who hit record on that? I'm not ready yet. Hold on. Okay, now I'm ready. What do you want? Oh yeah, welcome back to Ringworm. It's uh, it's almost 10 o'clock. It's a beautiful day. I don't know why I'm still in the cabin. I was like so wired working on the man cave the last couple days. I think yesterday morning I woke up at 4 o'clock. Usually I'll get up, do something for a couple hours, like read a book or listen to tunes and then fall back asleep. Like the last couple days I didn't, I didn't go back to sleep. So, uh, yeah, I slept, <laughs> I slept in late today. So I got one thing left to do before party week. You guys saw, uh, last week, I finally found the two tarps that match the tarps that are on the lean to. The lean to is like somewhere between three and four years old. So those tarps are just starting to wear through. So I need to replace them. And I don't really want to rebuild the entire lean-to. I thought about taking it down, moving it, making it different. But now that I've got the cabin and the man cave for storage of, like, you know, tools and stuff like that, I don't really care that much. In the spring, the water, I mean, there's no floor in the lean-to, obviously. Water just flows through there. I mean, I'll probably keep the chainsaws in there, tarps, that kind of stuff, and food for now. It's all in bins. I've got today... The rest of today. <laughs> what a lazy guy, right? I've got today that's sunny and nice, tomorrow that's cloudy and nice, and then several days of cloudy rain, not so nice. So I gotta haul my jackeries out right now, get them charged while there's still sun. We'll replace the tarps or do whatever we have with the tarps today and tomorrow, and then gut the thing, build some really nice shelves. We'll definitely have to mill up some logs because I'm running low on shelf lumber after doing the man cave. Uh, you know, we're just going to have to figure this out as we go. Let's, let's, come on. There's not enough sun left to charge these all the way in a day. So I'm just as behind those treetops now. But even right now, without the sun, actually hitting the panels you do get a little bit of ambient charge real quick charging now 13 watts eight ooh, 18 watts on that guy it only take like what 100 hours or something to charge it i can't believe this thing lasted as long as it did i forgot how we put this thing together i was just thinking oh, i'll take one of the tarps off and see if it's an easy repair check this out so this tarp there are a bunch of like log rounds, like firewood laying in the bottom of it. It's wrapped underneath with weights in it, basically. And it goes up over, it must be screwed to that little tiny ridge pole that's held up this whole time. Then the second tarp comes up the back. Look at this. One corner's tied onto the tree here. One's tied out there. And then there's three strings coming down this side. And look, they go down and they're trucker hitched on the... That stayed there onto just a spike, just a galvanized spike in the ground. I mean, this was a temporary shelter. It wasn't supposed to last this long. Look at, these are just the off cuts from milling a bunch of stuff. Didn't bother taking the bark off of there. Oh, jeez. Yeah, I know. Can I touch your muscle? <laughs> really used my glutes for that one. <laughs> <laughs> this is all screwed on, just regular general purpose screws with fender washers on them and then the tarp that comes up the back this tensions it over the top this one pulls it out there look at there's like fungus and stuff growing on it but it lasted gee it seems like forever ago that it built this stuff we're gonna have to machete around the perimeter here just so i can get in there oh look at that it's an old deer skull <laughs> We got it all out here at the worm. Yeah, I remember when we first lit this thing up, it was so cold out here and everything we had was wet. And when we finally got this going, Tito and I stood right over there and just stared at it like, oh my gosh. It's glorious. I know. It's like the prettiest thing I ever saw. There's smoke rolling out the top. We finally have a place that's warm. Of course, it's a couple tarps, no insulation and a really crappy old stove so it, it wasn't that warm but it was just enough you could you know hold your t-shirt or your jacket or whatever next to the stove and you know get things to dry out yeah and look at this end that uh ridge there is hollow it was completely rotted out when we put it up there 
man i really don't want to spend a bunch of time rebuilding this thing it's like it lasted this long maybe i'll just throw tarps on it and hope it'll last on if it lasted another year or two that would be great See, look what I got here. I thought I bought one of these a few years back. We got a double sink for our kitchen. I don't know how we're gonna get the water into it. I don't know how we're gonna get the drain going out of it, where the drain's gonna go. But I think we're gonna hook it up. There's gonna be a ridiculous kitchen. <laughs> the screws aren't even that long and they're not meant to be outside. See, it goes to, sh well, I don't know what it goes to show you, but something for sure. Cute little tensioner there. Oh, look at that. See, somebody used uh, bowlins so you can actually get this apart. Okay, now look at this madness. This is what's holding the back of the tarp. On the bottom, there's a log. I don't know what that's sitting on. You can see the tarp comes down. It's around here, goes around the log, and then ties back onto the top, and that's what was tensioning it. Looks like all this was holding this to this. I think I'm just going to cut all that off, and I'll redo it with something a little better. Although, it lasted. None of it's like sun bleached or eaten through. Let's see what we got over here. Looks like basically the same thing. Look at those big old shroomies. Lots of them. Yeah, those are the ones that sometimes come up purple, I think. Holy moly. Yeah, look at them. Nice purple hue. Yeah, there's no sense in untying these. They are a little bit crispy. We'll put new ones on there. <laughs> Some years ago, Tito and I uh, built a... Yeah, it was a sort of lean-to out in the National Forest in the woods, like, I don't know, a couple hundred miles from here. And we had a whole bunch of this camo paracord. I don't know where we got it, like hundreds and hundreds of feet. So every place something had to tie off, we'd cut, you know, three or five or ten feet off and wrap it around a hundred different directions. And then, of course, when we left that area, we couldn't leave tarps and string and everything out there. So we took it all down. And I'm still now using all the bits and pieces that we collected from that. I'll show you how much I got left in a minute. But I've been using it nonstop since I've been out here. thinking maybe we just peel these a little bit very easily maybe we'll take the uh, angle grinder with the sanding disc and just just sand down the tops of these so they're not so hokey hokey yeah just tucked underneath and stringed up to a screw uh, I was thinking I replaced this one because look at what a bend is in it. But I'm kind of thinking that actually might be what it looked like when we put it on there. Because these are all still quite flat and in line. Like remarkably so. And clearly this log has sunk down. I think we're going to leave that. Maybe we'll knock that out and put, you know, two or three or four inch longer support in there. Just to hold this up a little bit. Yeah, look at this thing. Like that was just balanced on the roots there and it looks like the other end was the same just set on some roots pinned in there i guess i don't need to take everything out here just to replace the tarps but if i'm gonna build shelves and stuff it's all gonna have to come out and i really hate to do this because i just finished the man cave yesterday i think i'm gonna have to fill it up just dump all the stuff on the floor in there Oh, you want to get one last one last look at this beautiful place before I make it unusable again? Oh, actually, the stuff I'm not going to use, the storage stuff, I could just put out there under a tarp. But I'm probably going to need the chainsaws and mill and stuff. So I'll put that in here for easy grabbage. No way. Oh, my bag of chainsaw parts I looked all over for. 
fell off my nail back there down between the tarps. Well, it'd be a lot easier to replace the starter cord and the poles now. Oh, all sorts of good sauces we got here. They sort of look good still. I think that ketchup's from 1993. I was looking for this hot sauce about six months ago. Sweet and Spicy Peach by Hot Daddies of Savannah. That was a good one. Well, we got all sorts of sauces for uh, Party Week wings. You know, one thing that's going to be really cool, I'm starting to get ideas for my uh, giant kitchen. Food lives in these things, which aren't really animal proof. They're definitely not smell proof, but I've never had anything like break into them. In the kitchen, I want to do like actual cabinets. And I was thinking anything that I don't really don't want animals to get into, like if food has a bunch of smell or something where the you know critters are going to want to get into it. I was thinking about doing like one or two cabinets, lining them with some kind of metal. So, you know, I'm not going to make them smell proof, but maybe make it so they can't get in there. And then stuff like this. Oh, look what else I found. All my tap and die sets and a bunch of spiders. But cans and jars of food that are sealed won't really matter. Those can be in a regular cabinet. Oh, it's going to be so much fun to build and so much work. If you wouldn't mind moving your skinny little legs. Come on. We are not just throwing these on the shelf. Everything has to be organized now. Oh yeah, now we're getting into the leftovers. Just handfuls of it. And apparently we got it all used. We got plenty. Look at all this good stuff. Oh, these were... Uh, I think these were the first strings for the uh, retractable coffee table. Now, I've been screwing with rope and string and cordage for all of my adult life, and I still cannot remember the difference between polyester, polypropylene, and nylon. Some of them have more stretch, some have less, some are better for UV, and I can't tell one apart from the other. This was the right cordage to use for this job because it's been in the sun and the weather for three and a half years, and... It still looks almost new. It's a little bit stiff, but I think most of the strength is still there. And I have a feeling if we'd used this, it would have been baked through. Years worth of stuff. Ooh. Remember this? We should light this thing up. Anytime I have paper or cardboard or anything, I set it aside and then I use it to start fires. And digging all this stuff out, I found lots of cardboard. So let's go light a fire. I shouldn't. The day is half gone, more than half gone, but yeah. Yeah, we need to. Just got to fill up that pan in there. That should be plenty. And then light the sucker on fire. Give it about a week to warm up. Ooh. I don't know where this box, it's a bean box. These things are great fire starters because it's waxed cardboard. I think that's why I saved it. Just burns forever. Woof, now we're ready. Of course, with even a tiny piece of this box in there, you don't need the flamethrower to get it going. Well, let's use it anyway. Yep. Completely unnecessary. How long this thing grew to try to get light from the window. I thought multiple times about milling up some lumber and putting walls on this. The problem would be there's no foundation under here and these little poles on the roof would not hold up a whole bunch of lumber. This is surprisingly not very buggy. There are a couple of bug trails under here, but these are from a long time ago, probably when I first cut it down. Yeah, I guess since the bugs aren't getting in there, I'm not going to peel the whole hole. I'm just going to clean up the tops and get some of the knots off here. Just make it smooth. Ugh, so many spiders. I 
was just thinking about when I built this thing, like how much different, not my life is, but my way of living is now than it was when I put this thing together. I don't know how great the videos were of doing this thing. They were so long ago. They were like literally the first videos I'd ever made in my life, ever edited together or shot. But it'd be worth watching one or two of them just to see like the first week or month of trying to figure out how to chainsaw mill. Like the first thing I built out of, out here out of logs and this kind of lumber, it's just so different. I was remembering as I take this stove out of here, I was remembering finally putting that thing in, laying those bricks down and trying to set it on there, trying to drag it over and had been sitting inside here, freezing and thawing for, I don't know, weeks. And the thing had sunk into the dirt. The legs had gone into the dirt and refrozen. Oh, come on. You dirty monkey. It's not what I expected. That final, we're finally gonna have some kind of heat out here and then I couldn't get it out of the ground. Anyway, I'll put a link here and uh, I'll put one in the description of the video if you guys are interested in watching. If you've seen uh, the inside of the cabin and the man cave and stuff in the last few months, you'll be blown away by what life was like first moving out here. Here, can you hold this? Take it, take it! I think that uh, wood stove, I got that at a garage sale. I think it was, whoa, I think it was 20 bucks. And then probably all this stuff, holy cow, look how clean that is. That must uh, actually be plated and stainless or, oh, maybe it is actually stainless. I'm sure all this stuff, the pipe and the cap and all that stuff probably cost 100 or 200 bucks. It's kind of crazy for a $20 stove. Just real, real fine workmanship here. <laughs> I really want to rip this thing off of here right now and all this, but I think I should get the new tarps on first in case it does rain. I think this weighs about 8,000 pounds. Man, that is rusty. Yeah, these tarps were just the size they were. We had to make it work for this shelter. As you can see, they're wrapped underneath. Yep chunks of uh, firewood in there for weights pulled back up and then tied off and again somebody was nice enough to put bowlins in here actually if this comes together right we could reuse that string in exactly the same spot no nah, there's no chance well who knows oh well hello there Just in case anybody wants to build one of these, it's incredibly easy. You know, a lot of times you go camping, you just string a, a rope between two trees, throw a tarp over it and like stake the edges out. That's basically what this was, except it needed to be able to hold snow. And that's why we decided to do this thing. So like everything, this wasn't well thought out. It was just done one piece at a time. So the first thing is you need a pole. How do you hold it up? You hold it up with another pole there. And there's a pole there. I'm pretty sure these were put on afterwards. Just use a chainsaw, cut that angle, and it's just toenailed in there a couple places. I mean, clearly, you're toenailing small screws like that. This is not made to stand for a long time, but you know, you might get a couple years out of it. And these are just jammed right down into the ground. I'm pretty sure the ground was frozen when we did it, so that was kind of the only option. Then the only reason it has this different slope here instead of just doing like an A-frame kind of thing is it just gives you more space inside. So that was just string one more pole between a couple trees and then drop the tarp over it. And it wasn't for quite a while before we put the ends on it. I think we were building my tent deck at the time. So these were all the throwaways. I thought, well, let's just screw them on there. You can use any kind of junk lumber for that. And then this end, I think was just leftover stuff from the deck. It's all one inch chainsaw milled. If you watch that first vid video of building this thing, you know, I just put boards back and forth. And then sort of like framed this out and then cut right through the wall.
you notice these all match up exactly with these because it's all the same board. Pretty simple, straightforward. It's a nice extra bit of storage. The only thing I'd recommend if you build something like this is pay the extra money and get good tarps, get like 10 mil tarps. When we came out here, we both, I think we both had a bunch of tarps. You know, we're gonna put something under our tent, something over our tent, you know, build some kind of lean-to or something. I bought the super cheap ones from, I think like Harbor Freight, like some of them are like five bucks a piece. All the uh, camo ones that you've seen around here, they're basically all gone now because they got eaten up, eaten? eaten up by the sun. But I think these are two 14 by 16 tarps and they were like in the neighborhood of 50 bucks a piece. I'm not sure, it could have been 30, could have been 60. But basically for a hundred bucks and a little bit of chainsaw gas, you know, you've got a usable storage unit. I mean, it's a good, if you get into chainsaw milling, any size chainsaw, if you've got some white woods, you know, some pine, some spruce, some fir, some cedar, whatever, it's really easy to mill. You can build one of these things in, in no time for basically free and then you could put all your garbage in it like I've done. Dang, you know what I just realized? I have a fire and I have brats. <laughs> I was gonna skip lunch, it's almost four o'clock but I think I could use a brat. Ooh. I don't know where that ancient uh, ketchup went so I've got chip dip and uh, hot sauce on here. Wow, that's good. stuff is so rough I can't believe it didn't tear through that thing. Ah, the nice thing about being able to peel some of these off is I can get to the screws. These have shrunk up so much they're sticking out like a quarter of an inch. I was trying to wait to do the fun stuff but you know I got it. It's in the way now. Oh, yeah, that's, ooh. Oh, uh, yeah, there's no frame there now. We'll have to do something about that. Yeah, we can probably use some of this for shelves. <coughs> Go immune system. I think I've got some of these cutoffs left over. We'll just put three new boards in there. Uh-oh, uh-oh, we got a problem. Yeah, these sitting on the ground should have been cedar. Stupid rain. I was promised, promised that it wasn't gonna rain till tonight. I got up this morning and a big cloud was on its way in. Just rained for a couple hours. All right, we gotta do something quick. I got some cedar, we'll put this stuff to the test. Chop the leg off, use this as a foot. This will soak for the next few years. I bet it'll hold up though, this is good stuff. It's only the very outside that was rotty. Yeah, we had this thing. This was bolted to the uh, wall in the man cave and the bunk folded down on this. It's like four by six. I wasn't sure what I was gonna use it for. We'll cut some pieces and jam them underneath there. It's starting to rain again, and I'm not done. <laughs> it's kind of a rule. You should never draw a knife within three inches of your face. Sometimes you got to break the rules, though. Get the bricks out. 
Maybe we can use these under the stove if we put it on the sky deck. They're not really that heavy. You want to see a guy uh, rip the seed out of his pants or maybe pop a little hernia? Watch this. Oh. <laughs> There's two pounds. There's two ounces. You're just gonna sit there, right? Don't worry. This is a bad idea. You know how in the winter I'm constantly having to chisel the ice and dirt out from in front of this door so it opens? Not so much in the summer, so I just thought it was all just, you know, the ground freezes, ice is bigger than water. Bigger, that's the word they use in science. So the ground heaves up and you gotta chop it down. This just happened to be laying on here. This is the one solid thing that's been here from day one. It's about probably end to end, two inches out of level, which means this wall has sunk two inches, which makes sense because everything's sitting on soft dirt. And then we've got this is just a tree trunk that's been holding that end up. The only thing that's been held up the whole time make this a little bigger and put it right back in. Sand rain in a half an hour. I thought it'd be easier to put these shelves in if I could access it this way, but I gotta get the top on. Problem is I have no idea where I put the tarp. You see it? That way? That way? Which way? Thanks for noticing. I appreciate that. Don't forget the bowling. Very important. I think this is how I did it. Do that temporary like. Don't cut the tarp now, dummy. It's a good thing I didn't uh, tie this down because I can't reach the eyelets there. Wow, seems huge in here. This is my chainsaw table. Love it. Let's see what we got for scraps. It's where I throw all the first and last cuts. Just for something like this. Keep an eye out, see what runs out from underneath here. Did you see anything come out? Check that out. Snake skin. Ooh, we should save that and put it under the microscope.
those new boards are a lot tighter than the old ones. Look at the cracks in there. I did at one point think about caulking all these in, but you know, there's holes everywhere. Plus it gets so wet in here. I really don't want to hold the moisture in. And so far that's worked pretty well. All right, we need one more giant shelf back here somehow. Got a bunch of this mildly rotted spruce. I think this was one of the mostly dead trees I cut down on the shooting range. And then I turned it into one and a half buys and realized the inside's just not, it's not 100%. It's like 85%. So, I mean, a shelf that's made out of one and a half inch huge boards would be plenty strong. I was thinking about building this into the wall, but I, who knows how long this place is going to last, how long it'll be up. I'm going to make it kind of freestanding so I can take it out of there and use it somewhere else later. And we'll just screw it into that wall. Accidental perfect fit. This is what I figured out for feet on an uneven ground is you don't set this because this isn't cedar. This would rot pretty fast and it's already partially rotted. Take a chunk of cedar, you can put it on the ground, whatever angle you want. And this is what actually holds the whole thing up. Right now I just got it tacked to the wall. And then if that does rot, we'll put a new one on there. Guess we can screw it in through the wall too, can't we? This would be a good three-hander right here. Oh, never mind, it went right through there. I don't know where this shelf came from, but I chopped it up a little bit, added some pieces onto it. I think it'll work perfectly right there. And I thought these were too short, so I extended them out. With all these shelves and such, there's no place to lean anything against the wall, so these are just for leaning. I've used up so many scraps in the last couple days, I'm almost giddy. Almost. Not... <laughs> No, almost giddy. Just thinking about doing a little platform right here. So far, yep, absolutely nothing sits on the ground. All my stuff is raised up. Keep it from freezing, getting moldy and everything. This is the only place left that doesn't have a platform. Look at the size of that thing. Must have not used it. Oh yeah, it's got cracks in it. We can use that. Let's see how many two by fours we can get out of this beat up thing. That's an old screw. <sighs> this must be uh, aspen left over from a floor or a roof. It's been sitting around here for a long time. It'd be nice to use it up.
Remember this string? It's gonna work out. We did it. We did it. That feels so good to have that done. Look at the organization this guy has. Five bins I got cleaned out. Wonderful shelves. Bungees and string and webbing and ropes all sorted. Food sorted out. I gotta admit, that took a lot longer than I thought it was going to, but it's done and it feels good. Now I can move on to something else fun. I do have an idea. I've got a few days before people start arriving for party week. There's one thing I wanted to do on party week, but I haven't invented it yet, and I don't know if it'll work. I've got a lot of 22 pistols, and I bought a crappy little Lazy Susan. I was trying to find a wooden one. But Sarah and I were at a dollar store not too long ago, and they had an oversized Jenga game. Did I already tell you about this? I don't know if I already told you about this. It was like two or three times bigger than normal. Maybe yay, big, or, big around, maybe a foot and a half, two feet tall. And I was thinking about picking it up, and then for party week, playing Jenga, Jenga with 22 pistols. So I was thinking we could take one of the stumps down on one of the shooting ranges, make sure it's really flat, I could build a, I really just need the bearing out of here. Make this out of wood, and we'll use the giant planer. Take a whole bunch of scraps I have around here. We'll try some different woods. I don't know if it's gonna work best with really light wood, or maybe, I don't know, maybe aspen. I was thinking, aspen, once you plane it, it's a little bit smoother on top. But we'll plane up a whole bunch of stuff. Probably have to use the corded circular saw. Rip them as straight as I can. I don't know if there's some way we could rip the blocks up, cut the blocks up with the circular saw, lay them on, on their side, and then maybe run them through the planer again. I don't know if we need to do that. I was thinking about working on all this during party week, but I have a feeling that it's going to take me a couple days to figure it out. I do have uh, about 11 different uh, 22 ammos. So we're going to have to find the right combination of ammo and wood blocks, also different size wood blocks. I don't know, do we want giant ones? Do we want small ones? I do think that no matter what blocks we use, one shot and they're probably going to be done for. You know, if they balloon out a little bit or crack, you won't be able to use them again. So we'll figure out which wood to use. I'll make a ton of them. I'll make hundreds of them. We'll just take a bag full down there and set the tower on top of the Lazy Susan. That way you can shoot the correct way into the shooting range. You know, I don't want to be walking around at 360 shooting all around here. But hopefully you can go up there. Turn this thing a little bit, get the shot you want. You get it. This is going to be fun. It's going to be really fun. So more than likely, if you come back next week, we'll figure this thing out. If it works, I think it's going to be a freaking blast. I bet we play this thing all week long. And the good thing is, I'll figure out how to get it to work, and then you can make your own, and you can try it too. All right. As always, you guys are awesome. Thanks for watching. See you next week. Pew, pew.